excited for season five. It's been a great one. Would you guys agree? I would agree. Are awesome. you the host in this scenario? I'm just trying to hang yeah. out, and everyone's just like looking at me. Like, well, yeah. Dustin, break. Say Tell something. Us. Nothing but down. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. After yeah. season four. Yeah. Uh, no, season five is a, is just a joyful season. We wanted to come out of season four, which I think saw it was a very emotional season. There were a lot of ups and downs. It was very turbulent and mm -hmm. um, revelatory. Characters finding themselves. So we wanted and season- And each other. And each other. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. And we wanted season five to just be memories that are made for our audience. We wanted to hand them some fun times on a platter and, and say, you know, here you go, well, cherry on yeah. top. I feel like I cry every time I read a script, though. <laughs> season five. In other news, Dan <laughs> <didn't cry. laughs> I find season five so heartbreaking. But it's not heartbreaking. It's emotionally it's like happy. Yes. Well, yeah, Tears. it's like, but yeah, in those moments of, especially because we've gotten to know these characters for so long that you're so invested, at least I am, because I don't have real life. But so, <laughs> my like, through these characters who I love so much, um, I find myself like, every little thing, even like happy stuff that we can't talk about, I, um, <laughs> I'm like, it kills me. It just makes me, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, anyways. And it's so that, a season well, filled with happy, happy, happy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a musical. There's a musical. Can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to put, I think like, from a writer's standpoint, we really like to put people through the, the ringer a little <laughs> bit. I think you have to keep a very clear and a uh, specific vision for the show and not be swayed by trying to, you know, involve what you think people will want. I think that's when things get really slippery. But is there any part of you that when you hear people say, oh, I really like these people together or these people together and there's a, there's a s strong backing of that, does that sway you into then further writing that way, or no. you literally just stick to it? No, I think for me the great thing about writing the show and then seeing the feedback is that you get to see how people are responding to the sort of tentpole moments that you wanted them to respond to. Mm -hmm. So for us it's all about like, like the Ted and Alexis stuff that we were planting in the beginning of season four, for example, it was little seedlings, like little, like the text message and things that you sort of thought, I hope that the audience Catch is paying attention to this. They were paying attention and to they the were. point where they were getting angry at me <laughs> and Ted, which I just gotta say, wow, they really they really blamed me for the whole relationship, relationship not happening. I was like, guys, she said no to me <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, oh, but it's, it's, it's Alexis. It's just classic yeah, Alexis. Yeah, it's classic Alexis. <laughs> I was like, but she wasn't a great person. <laughs> and they're like, Ted better get it together. Better get it together. There's I was so like, many he's, get it together yeah, he's the most responsible person with his job and his heart, yeah. that I, a character I've, that I've ever played, and yet I just got a bunch of shit from the fans. <laughs> Listen, so they're happy again, though. They I are. guess mm -hmm. for that's now. That's all that matters. Jeez, for now, <laughs> I know, <laughs> testy. Watch but yeah, dead. that's the fun part: is getting to see people responding to things that you hope that they will respond to. So you get things every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've had some like really, I think the show, not me, but people seem to, I think politically, it is a, a very joyful place for people to spend some time. And I think as a result, they have a, a, a tremendous connection and a sense of gratitude to um, the town in a fictitious sort of way. But I think that we have been able to provide people. An escape. An escape. Yeah, mm. definitely. And I think, when you're dealing with like political unrest, any kind of safe space that you can provide for someone, they will they will embrace with a level of intimacy that is almost sort of more heightened than normal, it seems. Mm -hmm. The thing I hear regularly from people like on the street um, is kit, like teens saying that they watch it with their family and mm. it's like the one thing or that it's the whole family can watch together, but like all generations can kind of, mm -hmm. and and then start to communicate with each other. Like people have actually said that to me, but they also say, you know, you look like that girl from Shit's Creek. I get that all the time. <laughs> I get that all yeah, the never, time. It's never yeah. like, oh my God, Shit's Creek. It's like, you know, do people tell you that you look, yeah. 
But then what do you say? Because if I'm with someone, I don't say anything. I'm like, oh, really? But then you if I'm the alone, I'm like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you rely on the person that's with you to be like, it's her. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> right. Right. Not right. just relying, it's a little bit of it's like, like yeah. I don't know, like, uh, am I? Say <laughs> say <something. laughs> say yeah. We rehearsed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, I like to tell this story, although it, ha it hasn't happened recently. I think it was after the first season, but this, I was outside a restaurant and this family came up to me, like parents and then three kids all under eight. And this dad brought his little girl who was like five up and he was like, oh, we're so excited. This is her favorite character and we love the show and and they were just like so excited about it and the mom said but what do we call it and the little girl looked up at me and said shoots creek <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it was the cutest yes. thing yes. i've yes. ever seen just like I this entire that. family <laughs> be so <laughs> overjoyed <laughs> it was I wonderful hate yeah, I hate that. shoots, creek. shoots creek. that's great so that child sweet. will never swear yeah so that. sweet right i know yeah. i was like you realize it's s c h i like it's not actually a swear okay but we'll you explain that <laughs> like uh, you realize that it's fine to say, right? <laughs> it's How somebody's real last name. <laughs> can I say you that can. with Mariah, what I couldn't believe when you said that Mariah Carey tweeted you and I was like, is this the ultimate for you? Like, who would be the ultimate? And he's like, well, Oprah, but Mariah Carey is like just a tiny, tiny bit. On. I couldn't believe that because like Oprah, Oprah, but and Mariah Carey is right up there. Yeah, with, wait a minute, what about Beyonce? Yeah, yeah there's three. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the trifecta. Three heroes the in life. The Holy Trinity. Beyonce. Mariah, Mariah is one of them. Well, Mariah was a childhood, like, she was like my number one. We went had, to her concert we went to the together. Concert. At the I family. turned my Do sister onto Mariah Carey. Were? She carried the torch for, no, probably oh something. Did. I carried the torch for a while, and I met her one time. And I told her that I went to her concert, and, and what she, she said, say? "Thanks." <laughs> Classic Mariah. Huge. So uh -huh. nice. Yeah. So wonderful. Yeah. S really humble. Scared shitless. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you again writing in the Mariah Carey thing obviously came from my own life. <laughs> <laughs> like there was some spill over there, and you're. Th I mean, ultimately, I think when you write any kind of dialogue, you have to sort of root it in something that comes from ex experiences. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the great thing about this show is that somehow it bleeds into the most unexpected places. Mm. And, yeah. you know, like, this is not a brag, this is just, I think, the, the magic of TV. Um, I got a direct message at one point from Cameron Crowe, oh, who that, is, that? just <laughs> has written some of the greatest dialogue in movies. And he was talking about the, the romantic moments in the show and just talking about just being so complimentary and the whole time I was like, this guy wrote fucking Jerry Maguire. Mm -hmm. He wrote like... Almost Famous. Mm -hmm. Almost mm -hmm. Famous. You are home. He wrote like some of the greatest romantic dialogue in film and he somehow has found the show and is, oh. you know, enjoying it. I mean, it's great. But yeah, Mariah Carey, the tweet chain ruined my life for a, <laughs> just I went through like screaming fits. I, like I, I was crying at one face. point. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I was, I shot the text to no one. I'm like, she tweeted, I didn't get my face there. She tweeted your face. I'll never yeah. be able to, uh, to she live that down. Your face was on your face. Twitter yeah. account. Yeah. But we were talking about Dan this. Dan will always hate me for that. <laughs> we, we, no, we were talking Surprise. about this, no. that it's kind of, it, We've gotten a little jaded, not jaded to the fact, but like it's, it's every day there's somebody like new that's yeah. like Helen Hunt yeah. and then um, Elton John is yeah. a like it's Angelica so Houston crazy. Is like, it's my favorite show. Us. Like yeah. you're just like, okay, well. Yeah, so it's like hard to just, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean. It couldn't happen to a weirder group of Canadians. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you get asked, they're like, "I heard uh, Angelica Houston was talking about your show," and I'm like, "Oh God, what? Who? Why? Yeah. Why is she doing that?" Yeah. I don't know. That's always like yeah. an actual Canadian reaction. It's just yeah. like, why? Yeah. 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 Why? How? Yeah. Was there nothing else? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The song was a moment that people 
seem to enjoy. Which song? Just the, a small uh, song. <laughs> simply, <laughs> simply the Vets oh, yeah. uh, yes. was a oh, single. Yeah, yeah. Simply the Vets. <laughs> you guys enjoy me? Yeah. Better than all the. You know it. Everyone knows the words. It's Better fine. Than all the pets. Better, Better than, than all the, the pets. pets. Mm. No, no, we just use vets. vets. The we just go vets all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Remember when we were just yeah. all vets. Better yeah. than yeah. any vets. 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 Yeah. Vets. 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 Anyone I've ever vets. Anyone I've ever vets. <laughs> I'm stuck on your vets. <laughs> 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 on every word you vets. Mm. I couldn't improve that. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're in progress. I couldn't improve that. <laughs> but I will say, like, the social media sort of like, uh, I'm I'm terrified of it because I'm I'm not good at it. But like that was the most fun I've. Ever had on social media when like that like when that you? episode aired and people were actually not like you suck you know yeah. I was like oh this is fun mm -hmm. I see why people get into this yeah. were you expecting it to be what it became like were you expecting it when shooting it thinking oh maybe this is something that no I th I, th I felt like, like I didn't like screw it up but like I I felt like humble. Uh, no, 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 no. I, well, hang on. No, I, I nailed it. I nailed it. <laughs> That's what we want. I, I absolutely fucking nailed it. Crushed it. Um, but no, no, no. It was like when we did it on the day. Like I knew that people were gonna really relate to like the the narrative of the characters. I didn't know that it would like Go to number one. be its own Literally. thing in a way. You know that was that was a, a surprise to me, and like I kept on getting text messages from Dan, being like, "We're at 13." I was tracking. Yeah. <laughs> We're at 12. You weren't the only because one getting those text messages. I was, <laughs> Emily didn't care because they weren't about her. Yeah. But, uh, Stop was, texting me. It was when we wrote the scene. We the intention was always that we would release the single, so yeah. it was something that I had sort of in my head manifested, and then to see it climb the charts for this guy was great. I was like a proud parent yeah, being like, yeah. proud it's man. number 10. And then your own album. Like, yeah, I'm out with my friends. It's five. Yeah. We're out with three. He was like, all right, I get it. And I'm like, you don't though. Because you're not responding no, with you know enough what? exclamation marks. I really didn't. Like I don't, and I still don't. It was it very was surreal. It was infuriating to me. I, I, I think a lot of the the feedback that I'm that I get is that people love the dynamic of like, you know, because people have become so attached to David and his sort of like his uniqueness, the just the way that's that he is. That's, I, that's, that's my perspective. Well 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 people hate David. No. <laughs> well, I'd say there's a little bit of hatred for David and everyone. Well, for, um, but like you know, I think part of the fun is, and and he's he's such a, a self-deprecating guy when it comes to his own like mm -hmm. his own love life. He's always referencing like these terrible catastrophes, mm -hmm. and so like you know, the audience is like, oh my God, he's a disaster, and mm -hmm. would be. A disaster to date, but that's not the experience of that Patrick has of, of dating him. He just like or it is. You just have a lot of patience. Yeah, you just yeah. Have a, a patience lot of patience. Of but and, and it evens out because yeah. he's mm -hmm. like, well, I I love so much about you that that's just you mm -hmm. know I love exactly. who you are and that's yeah. part of who you are and so there we go. You yeah. know, I I don't find there's any pressure in that in in playing a character who's like coming out. I think it's like a that's a a wonderful character to to be. Playing somebody who's discovering and is open to like you know the experience of falling in love with somebody that the unexpected experience of falling in love with somebody I think that's I don't know I find that like as a it's a beautiful character gift really more than a more than a challenge it's like um, so exciting well you're always looking in a character for the thing that they're like going through or they're experiencing or that like you know makes them uniquely themselves and to have that right off the bat with this character there was an attraction and like how to navigate that attraction and then there was like um, a, a real connection and like figuring that out and playing that all through season four and the sort of stages of like falling in love with somebody and then you know now be the the stages of like being in a relationship with somebody I think it's you know I, I love it it's been probably the most rewarding character experience of my professional life <laughs> You already got the job, man. Relax. You're hired. It's fine. Please keep me. <laughs> well, I've been so grateful to the writers um, for letting Alexis go on such an amazing trajectory over the course of the five seasons. Because she started out as this flighty handful that kind of flitted from spot to spot, being enamored of people and having people kind of fall in love with her without any connection whatsoever. 
Um, and now she's this, I would say like semi-grounded, <laughs> um, emotionally available person who is not only uh, has, has not only achieved love for the first time, but has um, pursued higher education and self betterment, and that is certainly not what we saw on the first day of shooting in season one. Um, so to be able to play that incredible path for a character that I've come to really fucking admire. Mm -hmm. um, has been a really special opportunity. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 cool to see her, grow. you know, grow. <laughs> uh, no, just to further what you were saying about yourself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I uh, no, and I, I think that's actually it's been as the person kind of standing across from you watching that happen. I think it's been so lovely to see. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier about all the fans uh, giving Ted and subsequently me shit for not like <laughs> just bowing down in front of Alexis. But you know, there's a lot of good reasons that uh, that uh, Ted was taking a step back, and I think there was that growth that needed to happen. But it's one thing to simply write that, but uh, I think that Annie, uh, you have been able to. Uh, in, in a realistic and authentic way, actually create, sort of like connect all the dots that need to get you from where you were to that sort of place of realizing you needed to be something more and then finally kind of coming into your own and, and becoming that person, uh, becoming that more uh, as Alexis. And I think, you know, certainly the end of season four was indicative of, you, you know, how far you had come, uh, just those lovely scenes with Ted uh, and Alexis in the, uh, 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 with the wall of dogs, uh, <laughs> and uh, but then but then again uh, here in the cafe, uh, you know your your the lock and key speech and all that kind of stuff. I just thought it was uh, so well done. Again, it was really well written. But then how you were able to sort of elevate it, but at the same time uh, keep this character that you've created, you know, since day one, sort of ingrained within that. So it's not only is it something the audience wants to see, but we believe it. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Kudos. Well Thanks, said. Ben. What a speech. Woo. That was a lot. I'm done. He didn't even <laughs> cry at the end of that. The vet's unleashed. Wow. <laughs> you, were, you were getting drunk at that party. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's fun. I mean, it's it's uh, it's been quite the journey for Ted because he, uh, I, I still remember uh, in, in season one getting to, uh, by getting to, I mean asking nobody and just starting to make puns <laughs> with the animals I was holding in my hands at the time. <laughs> Uh, like at the, at the book ending the scenes. And I, uh, I am very grateful, Dan, mm. uh, that you have been able to restrain <laughs> yourself <laughs> enough to let me get away with saying that shit to the point now that you guys actually write them in. I thought probably in the hopes that I wouldn't also then make up my own. Uh, I apologize that that wasn't the case. Uh, if anything, I was like, oh, puns? Yeah, I've got those. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it's it's been something pretty uh, pretty fulfilling for me to be able to do that because it's you know it's it's a comedy and uh, as a performer you're always trying to find like okay so what is it that I uh, as my acting coach one called uh, once called it positive inventory what do I actually bring to this character me myself Dustin what can I bring to Ted Pumps. and uh, <laughs> no I, That's really and, great. and I know it's it's a silly thing but it it was I, I had to find a way it was I mean don't get me wrong I just think they're dumb jokes that are hilarious but also uh, being opposite a character like Alexis, whom you know I, she's endearing and charming, but also almost offensively uh, uh, sort of inconsiderate <laughs> in the beginning, and you yeah. know what I mean. Like, and so That's you so had fun. to find a way. So, like, how can this guy uh, actually, you know, she's someone who you're just rolling your eyes at all the time with what she says. So there needs to be an opposite eye roll thing with this guy, and I think. There's no other form of humor that garners more eye rolls than puns. <laughs> uh, so the, being able to kind of work that in and, and as, as, as sort of grounding for, for my character has been uh, a true joy. Uh, and then the fact that now it's actually being written in uh, is even better because I just feel it's like, yeah, fucking worked. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that over the course of the years that the, you and the writers write little things in that are very us sometimes like as you I get think to you know have us to. yeah to I think, yeah when you i think we were lucky enough to have a cast of actors that were hired and embodied characters 
that needed no improvement. And by that I mean, so often in the first season of a show, you're, the characters are still finding their footing. Like, how do they speak? How do they act? What do they do? What are their priorities? And we were so lucky in terms of the casting process to find actors that were these characters. Um, and as a result, there is an authenticity uh, uh, to those characters that makes it very easy to continue to personalize to the actor playing it because they are one and the same. So obviously getting to know everyone personally outside of work, you're able to play to the strengths that you know people have as human beings and also <laughs> as characters. But I think it does help tremendously to have a cast that you can really throw anything at and know that it will be executed beyond your wildest dreams. Like when you talk about my, my bad posture, when other characters talk yeah. about it, I, I don't even have to work at that. No. I just yeah. come and I, I have that. <laughs> and when you talk about things like my natural deodorant not working, that's yeah. not, that's, I wouldn't say uh, that's like an Alexis thing, I'd say you maybe that's drew life. it from real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And brought sure. that in for me to make me feel yeah. More at home yeah, and yeah, safe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you yeah. talk about the whiteness of my skin, that's yeah. not something that I have to work at. That literally mm -hmm. is here mm -hmm. yeah. on display. Yeah, it's actually. I thought you do the. I thought you do the thumb. Right. But you also oh yeah, and you look like a thumb. thumb. <laughs> that is my I didn't want to spoil thing that moment. Time. That spoiler moment. Right. Yeah. That was me looking like a thumb, which is really not a spoiler because it's true. No, looking like a thumb. My engagement when when Moira called me spooky and, and my tiny titties, <laughs> and, and then when oh you, no one wants to look at these tiny, tiny boobies. <laughs> Wait, what? It's, what? That's in season, season three. three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was you talking, think, I think. Oh, I look too spooky. spooky. Oh, <laughs> oh, no one wants to look at these <laughs> tiny <laughs> boobies. And then Moira's nudes. Yeah, yeah. Oh then, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I really, I, I feel. Oh, oh boy. Mm. Alright, here we go. Yep. Here it comes. <laughs> no, but I am really like really grateful that I get all this stuff. Like, yeah, Stevie gets a boyfriend and What does that feel like? <laughs> well, in my real life I don't have that much experience with it. I, I have the experience of like trying to get and uh but um, I don't think that's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, no. I don't understand. <laughs> um, but, um, but, um, thanks. Cute moment, guys. He takes Thank care of us. Yeah. Come on. I want to stop talking. Why? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, who knows what's in store for Twyla's love? Literally anything goes, so it could, be, <laughs> it could be anything. I mean, I like to think that Twyla has her gets it when she needs it. Sure. That's a weird thing to say. Have we ever met the uh, the cook, the chef? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, just well, saying. I think George, George? is um, sounds strong is a, and handsome. Yeah, we've seen him. I don't. I mean, you know, he, in the workplace, he could be a, a, a yeah, he, an uncle or he could be. We it could be a family business. Mm -hmm. It could have been what? the cafe. No, not like <laughs> so. No, we have seen him, and he's more of an uncle mm -hmm. yes. as opposed mm -hmm. to like a uh, like strong like a love young man. Yeah. Yeah. So not really boyfriend made. material. Yeah, not you like know, a hot uncle. Not for her. Not like a hot Sarah uncle. Sarah gotcha. <laughs> Strong, tall, <laughs> um, outdoorsy type. Mm -hmm. okay. So like a mutt. So mutt. Yeah. 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 Um, sure. If you want to go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like a mutt. Twyla has some of the darker content in the show, but it is always it? with this like wonderfully like yeah. positive. positive energy. I just Twyla and Bob are my two favorite characters on this show. Hundred oh, percent. That's 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 hundred percent true. My two favorite characters, and it's because they just show up and say the most horrific, darkest <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. and yeah. then they're like, "I'll be right uh, back with your order," yeah. or, or, or like but, Bob jogs away, and it's just yeah. like it's Bob it's easily so my favorite little just like like because I think like we were talking about before, it is a show that like people can watch with their family and all that kind right. of stuff, but I think the darkness of Twyla's familial history is, yeah. is just like un. Real. Yeah, peel back one layer. And, and then like Bob and HBO. Gwen, like the fact that oh the sh they're in an open relationship <laughs> that only is open to her, and like it's, just, it's so great, so great. I just like that Twyla is always 
Uh, I think she makes, I think sometimes it seems like she isn't aware of some of the stuff she's saying, and I, and I do think sometimes she isn't aware, but I would like to think that she is aware of how dark it can be, but she chooses to not look at it mm -hmm. as darkness or kind of take that with her. She always has a, such a wonderful, optimistic, positive outlook on life because things just happen and it's life and you gotta keep going. <laughs> I mean, there's darkness you know? and then there's twilightness. Twilightness. <laughs> twilight. Oh, my oh I'm sorry, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> and on that note. Guys, all in. Thank you. Look. I'm moisturized. Annie's a sweaty one. I'm sweaty one. Yeah.